In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, on God, Amen. I wish you all a very blessed and happy Feast of the Cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. As you know, we celebrate the Feast of the Cross for three days, yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And I'd like to thank Reverend Father Angelus for inviting me to be with you during this weekend. It always brings joy to me when I come to your blessed church with the Bon Angelus and with all of you. We'll speak tonight about how to make our families established strong in the faith in order actually to face all the challenges around us. We are living in a very, very evil time. And it is very important right now to confirm our families in the true faith in order to withstand all the challenges that are facing us. Many challenges, moral, doctrinal, financial, spiritual, many, many challenges. And our reference is the scripture to know how to establish and to build our churches and to found it on a strong foundation so it will be built on the rock, not on the sand. The definition of the family, according to the scripture, the family is a small church. St. Paul, in many of his letters, he addressed the people like Philemon, he told him, the church in your house. So the family is a church. It is the place in which the Holy Trinity works in uniting the couple together, in sanctifying this relationship, and through the procreation, in actually bringing children to Christ, children to God, and to the church to be light to the world and salt to the earth. And as a church usually has a tower, and this tower symbolizes how the church is a shining lampstand, shining to the surrounding areas. In the same way, every family, every Christian family, should be like a shining lampstand. And this is actually what St. Paul mentioned in Ephesians when he told them in in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 8, For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as the children of the light. So the family should be like a shining lampstand, shining in the darkness of the world. Also, in Philippians chapter 2, verse 15, he said that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world. In the midst of crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world. The first point, actually, we need to build our churches on the foundation of God. There is no other foundation, when I said to build our churches, I mean to build our families, on the foundation of God. As the Lord said to Peter, you are Peter, and upon this rock, which rock? The faith, the faith that Christ is the Son of the living God. I will build my church, So in the same way, any family should be built on the rock of faith in God. Why? There are five reasons why we need to build our families on God. Number one, God is love. So the absence of God means absence of love. And when there is no love, there is hatred, there is conflict, there is fighting, there is confusion. There is envy, there is murder. 
And God actually is the source of unity and oneness. See the whole scripture written by more than 40 authors and written over a period maybe 3,000 uh, years. But you feel there is a unity in the Holy Scripture. When you read Genesis and you read Revelation, you read the letters of St. Paul, you read the minor prophets, you read the four Gospels, you read the historical uh, books in the Old Testament, there is unity. How? Because the author is the Holy Spirit. And who is the one who is uniting the couple in the family? It is the Holy Spirit also. So through God actually, we will have the love and the oneness. If God is absent, then there is no love in the family and there is no oneness in the family. And the Lord emphasizes this principle when he said, the two shall become one. And what God has joined together, no man can separate. So it is God actually who made the two one. He is uniting them and joining them in a mystical way. That's why the marriage is a mystery, mysterium. Because no one can understand the work of the Holy Spirit, how he unites the two into one. And from this union, the children comes. Also God is the source of blessing. When we build our families on the foundation of God, these families will be blessed. You know in the scripture, one thing can, re can be a symbol of opposite or contradicting things. For example, the lion. The lion can be a symbol of the Lord Jesus Christ the lion who came from the tribe of Judah. But the lion also can be a symbol of the devil. As St. Peter said, the devil is like a roaring lion looking forward to devour you. So in the context, how we know whether the lion is representing the Lord Jesus or representing the a devil from the context. Another example is the yeast. Yeast can be a symbol of the kingdom of heaven. As we read in Matthew chapter 13, the Lord said the kingdom of heaven is like a yeast. Uh, a woman took it and put it in three measures of flour. But the yeast also is a symbol of hypocrisy. When the Lord told them, beware of the yeast of the Pharisees, he was speaking about hypocrisy. Again, from the context you can understand. So, water and wine, what they are represent in the context of marriage. Usually water represents the Holy Spirit. But in the context of marriage, water represents the absence of love. In the context of marriage, water represents the absence of love. Why? As we read in Song chapter 8, love is like fire. And many waters cannot put off this fire. So the water actually quenched or putting off the fire of love. So, if we say there is water in this marriage, means there is no love in this marriage. And the wine, in the context of marriage, 
represent love. Again, as we read in the book of Psalms, your love is better than wine. As a person gets drunk with wine, in the same way, love can make the person drunk, but in a good sense, not in a bad sense. Let us go to Cana of Galilee and see what happened there. They ran out of wine. Means there is no love, because wine is a symbol of love. All what we have, water. And water means all what we have in this family, things that put off love, that quench love in this family. Then they brought, they invited the Lord Jesus Christ with his mother and the disciples. And what did the Lord do? He transferred the water into genuine wine. He transferred the things that are putting off love in this marriage, in this relationship, into genuine wine, into true love in this marriage. So, if the Lord Jesus Christ and his mother Saint Mary and the apostles and the saints are in our families, then the things actually can make conflict, tension, separation, can actually be changed into genuine wine, into true love in this family. That's why in the book, Marriage and Family Life, when St. John Chrysostom spoke about family problems, he said the first step in solving any family problem is repentance and returning back to God. When the people actually repent and return back to God, the problems will be solved by itself. We spend a lot of hours trying to solve the problems and they are not solvable because there is no repentance. But if the couple return it back to God in true repentance, not in a fake repentance, then the problems will be solved. Because God will change the water into wine, will change the conflict into peace, the tension into joy. That's why it's important to establish our families on God. Because God is the source of blessing and He can transform the challenges, the divisions, the tension into true love. Also, God is the source of all wisdom, the heavenly wisdom. And as we read in the book of James, in the letter of St. James, one of what well, characteristic of the heavenly wisdom, peaceable, willing to yield. Think about these two characteristics, peaceable and willing to yield. How many conflicts we have in our families because we are not willing to yield, because each one is very opinionated, each one insists on his opinion, each one wants to control this relationship. But if we are willing to yield and peaceable, so when we build our families, on the foundation of God, we will have this heavenly wisdom that's peaceable and also willing to yield.
family life is not an easy life because you bring two persons from different backgrounds, different maybe education, social status, spirituality, etc. And you make them live together in one place, making decisions together all the time. So, definitely, this is not an easy thing. That's why one characteristic, very important characteristic of a successful family, is the willingness to endure and to have long suffering and to be patient. This generation, our contemporary generation, they don't have patience. I hear from many young couples, after two months of marriage or three months of marriage, they are asking for a divorce because they cannot endure. They don't have any patience. But if we build our families on the foundation of God, we will learn how to endure as it is written about the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So when he endured the cross and despised the, sh the shame, he was glorified and he was seated at the right hand of the throne of God. That's why St. Paul uh, asking us, consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. So when I feel weary or discouraged, I should consider, reflect on the Lord Jesus Christ, who endured and despised the shame, and be patient until actually we overcome these challenges. Also, we need to build our families on the foundation of God because God is the source of comfort. The Holy Spirit is called the Comforter. And He is the source of peace and joy. These are the fruit of the Holy Spirit when we are filled with the Holy Spirit. So, if our families are built on the foundation of God, we will have peace, joy, comfort, even in the midst of all the hardships and the challenges and the tribulations that we may face as a family. And finally, we need to build our families on the foundation of God because only God can satisfy all our needs and all our expectations. Many times tension happens in the family because of unmet expectation. What do I mean by unmet expectation? The husband expecting things from his wife. Wife expecting certain things from her husband. Parents ex have expectation from their children. Children have expectation from their parents. When these expectations are not met, we are unhappy. We need our expectation to be met. But all of us who are weak, sinful people, and many times, many times often, we cannot meet the expectations of others. 
That's why if I'm waiting for others to meet my expectation, I will be defeated. I will be unhappy. But if Christ is in the relationship, if God is the foundation of this family, then whatever is lacking, I can find my satisfaction in Christ. In Christ, I can find this satisfaction in Christ. If I need love, I will find it in Him. Care, I will find it in Him. Validation, I will find it in Him. Commitment, I will find it in Him. Integrity, I will find it in Him. Acceptance, I will find it in Him. Only Him, that He can actually satisfy all my needs. These are essential needs. And we expect from our spouses, our children, our parents, to give us the love, the care, the validation, the commitment, the integrity, and the acceptance. And when they cannot meet, we feel betrayed. But if our families are built on the foundation of God, all these needs, all these expectations will be fulfilled and satisfied from God. That's why I said it's important to build our families on the foundation of God because He is the source of love and unity, because He will bless our families as, and, and will change the things that bring attention to the family into genuine love, because He is the source of wisdom and understanding. He is actually given the power to endure and to be patient. He is the comforter and will give us the peace and the joy that we need. Also, He can satisfy all our needs and all our expectations. In practical way, how can we build our families on the foundation of God? We spoke about the importance. But in practical, what does this mean? To build our families on the foundation of God. The last part in the crowning ceremony, both of them, they kneel in front of the altar. As if the church, while the church gives the, the couple the final blessing or the last blessing here, before dismiss them after the crowning ceremony, is telling them, now you are leaving from in front of the altar. The altar is the source of your strength. The altar is the source of your love. The altar is the source of your unity. Then you need to establish an altar in your house. The family altar. The family altar. Families should spend the time on a daily basis praying together, reading part of the scripture together. This is what we call a spiritual intimacy. When we are united together in prayer, and in reading the scripture, here the Holy Spirit will bless this family and God will expel every evil spirit from this family. There will not be a place for Satan in this family. Many families pay attention to have dinner together or to have fun time together or quality time together or family reunion together and all these are beautiful but what about your spiritual intimacy 
You need actually to have spiritual time together on a daily basis. That's how you build your family on the foundation of God. Even in monastic communities, because monastic community is also like a family. Each monk actually prays his spiritual rule or canon in his cell. But they come again and pray together with the rest of the community in the church. Why? Isn't it enough that I pray my spiritual rule in my cell? Why I go and repeat if I pray first, third, sixth hour in my cell? Why I go and repeat them? Because when we pray together, this unites us together. The Lord told us, if two or three gather in my name, I will be in their midst. That's why when we come to the church, we say, Emmanuel, our God, is now in our midst with the glory of his Father and the Holy Spirit. Every time you pray with your spouse and your children, you can say, indeed, Emmanuel, our God, is now in our midst with the glory of his Father and the Holy Spirit. So it's very, very important to have this family altar, to spend the time together every day in praying and reading the scripture. Also, as I said, they take the, their strength from the altar Every week, every week, they should come to the church as a family and partake from his body and his blood. They need actually to assemble together, to assemble together. And in communion in, in the Eucharist, we have only one body, one bread and one cup. Because all of us, we are not individuals anymore, but we are members in the one body, the body of Christ. So, very important every week to come and to partake from the Eucharist together. Uh, and for us to be worthy of partaking of his body and his blood we need to live the life of repentance and to practice the sacrament of confession we cannot just come and approach the table of the Lord with in unrepentant heart or without confession in order actually to be united together and not to be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ we need to come in worthiness and worthiness means with a repentant heart practicing the sacrament of confession number three we said number one family altar, number two, Eucharist. Number three, we need actually to reconcile our differences quickly in the same day. There is important verse in uh, Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 26 when St. Paul said do not let the sun go down on your wrath do not let the sun go down on your wrath so if you fight with each other if you come into conflict with each other 
reconcile your relationship before the sun goes down. I know most of us, we know this very, very well. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. But maybe many of us, we don't know the rest of this verse. The rest of this verse is very important. And explain to us why St. Paul said, don't let the sun go down on your wrath. You know the rest of this verse? It says, no give place to the devil. Which means, if I did not reconcile my relationship, I'm inviting the devil to be in this relationship. So if we are not reconciled for one night, then the devil is staying with us this night. If we are not reconciled for three days, the devil is staying in this family three days. If we are not reconciled for one month, the devil is staying in this family for one month. So, how can we build our families on the foundation of God while we are inviting the devil to be with us? There is no fellowship between God and the devil. Either God or the devil will be in this relationship. So we need to reconcile our relationship. Humble yourself. Reconciliation needs humbleness. It needs spirit of forgiveness. It needs a true love. If we have true love, and if we are humble and we have the spirit of forgiveness, then we can actually reconcile all our relationships together. So, you cannot say I'm building my family on the foundation of God while you are fighting together and abandoning each other for a very long time, don't talk with each other for a long time. No, you are inviting the devil in this relationship. Number four, walking in the fear of God and actually raising our children in the fear of God. One verse actually mentioned about the churches during the time of the apostles in the book of Acts, uh, chapter 5, that the churches were growing in the fear of God. So, because the, the churches because the people were walking in the fear of God, that's why the churches were growing and having also peace. And since the, the family is a church, in order actually to have our family uh, built on the foundation of the Holy Spirit, we need actually to walk in the fear of God. What do I mean by walking in the fear of God? Sometimes we have like what we call a spiritual schizophrenia. What do I mean by spiritual schizophrenia? In the church, I have one personality. But outside the church, 
I am a totally different person. There is no consistency. I come to the church on Sunday and I attend the liturgy and partake of the Eucharist. But once I leave the church, I forget who I am. And I'm totally conformed to the world. And it is clear in our celebrations. For example, in the day of the crowning ceremony, after the wedding, we go to the reception and we do things actually that are offensive to God. And here, how the people who were praying in the church for one hour now is celebrating in a very ungodly way. There is no fear of God. Isn't it spiritual schizophrenia? Because we are doing two contradicting things at the same time. In the same way, we don't raise our children in the fear of God. We bring them to the church. But unfortunately, not every a church goer is a godly person. Unfortunately, we differentiate between church goers and godly people. Theoretically, every church goer should be a godly person. But in reality, it is not. Because we don't walk in the fear of God. And we don't raise our children in the fear of God. You need actually to discipline your children in the fear of God. To teach, to teach them His commandments and the virtues. On the day of baptism, Abuna in the commandment at the end, he says to the parents and to the godparents, plant in your children these virtues. And then he mentions more than 12 virtues. Plant in them honesty, faith, love, charitable deeds, uh, forgiveness, humbleness. Many, many virtues. To raise our children in, in the fear of God, we, we need actually to be actively involved in their life. Actively involved. Not only just by watching us. Yes, being a good example is very important. But you need to sit with them, talk with them. They spend more time with you than with their Sunday school servants. In order to build your children on the fear of God and your family to be built on the foundation of God. When a person or a child, when he grows and becomes a teenager, when he drifts away, he causes bitterness to the whole family. The whole family suffers because of this person. But we can avoid this to a great extent if the parents are walking in the fear of God all the time, not only when they come to the church, and raising their children in the fear of God. Another point about how to build our families on the foundation of God. It's about media, TV, internet, social media. How actually we use all these things? Anything actually, any true invention is a blessing from God and can be used for our edification. 
But sometimes when we abuse or misuse these things, it can be very, very destructive to the family. For example, if each member in the family is doing innocent activities on his phone, but if we are not united together, then these gadgets actually are separating us. For example, maybe you are having dinner together, but each one is looking at his phone and each one is distracted in, in, the, in his world in her world yes, physically you are around the same table but each one is in his world where is the unity here so we need to have some clear regulation not only on what we watch or what we, whether it is innocent or ungodly activities, but when it is used and how it is used. These gadgets can cause addiction. Games, for example, are very, very addictive to the children. Try to take a telephone from a young child who is playing games and actually he will exhibit all the withdrawal symptoms of an addict. He will cry and scream as if he is going, going through withdrawal. You don't need to do this to your children or to yourself. Not only the children but adults also are added. Beside what we watch and how we are involved in the social media, chatting many times is unclean. Pornography is very common among many, many people. So how can we say we build our families on the foundation of God and all these things actually exist in the family? These things actually will make the devil present in the family, not God. So how this family will be built on the rock and how this family can withstand all the challenges around us and the evil around us. So we need to be wise in using all this media and the content as well as in how we use them. Another point, it was said about the Lord Jesus Christ, He did not come to be served, but to serve, and to offer Himself as a ransom for men. And as I said, the family is a shining lampstand. So each family should be involved in the service in one way or another. Either serving in the church or in the community. Take your children and go and visit orphanage, foster home, people who are sick in the hospital. Believe me, these services, while we are doing it to help others, but we ourselves 
will benefit from these services more than those whom are helping. And I notice when we do like mission trip and we take the youth with us, we see how these trips actually affect them and change them and transform them. The Lord did not live for himself, but he lived his life in serving others. He was wandering from one place to another place to heal the people, to give them a word of comfort, to help them, to encourage them, to support them. In order for our families to be strong, we need to be serving others. In the last day, the Lord will separate people on his right and on his left based on what? Based on their services, their contribution to the community. I was hungry and you give me food. I was thirsty and you give me drink. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you asked about me. I was a stranger and you hosted me. You need actually, if you want to build your family on the foundation of God, you need to have the services, the spirit of service. And you plant this in your children. Of course, there are many other things, but just to remind you, we spoke how to build in a practical way, how to build our families on the foundation of God, through the family altar, through the Eucharist, through reconciling our conflict very soon, otherwise we will bring Satan uh, into the relationship by walking in the fear of God and raising our children in the fear of God by uh, managing the media uh, in the right way uh, and in a way glorifying God and finally by having the spirit of service uh, in our families and we teach it to our children. As I said in the beginning, we are living in a very difficult time. Everything around us now is against God, contrary to the biblical principle. Uh, and now it is time actually to witness, as the Lord told us, you will be witnesses for me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the end of the earth. May the Lord help all of us to be true light to the world and soul to the earth. Glory be to God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever. Unto the ages of the ages. Amen. We proclaim and say, O our Lord Jesus Christ, who was crucified on the cross, trample Satan under our feet. Save us and have mercy on us, who have received the grace of Moses, the priesthood of Melchizedek, the old age of Jacob, the long life of Methuselah, the excellent understanding of David, the wisdom of Solomon, and the spirit that directly who came upon the apostles. Lord, preserve the life and rising of our honored Father, the Archbishop Pope of Atawadros, and our Father, the Metropolitan Abba Yusuf. May the God of heaven confirm them on their thrones for many years and peaceful times. May he subdue all of their enemies under their feet speedily. Pray to Christ on our behalf that he may forgive us our sins in peace according to his great mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, bless us. Amen. Bless me. Bless me. Lord, the repentance forgive me. Say the blessing. Christ our God. And so be. O 
King of Peace, grant us your peace, establish for us your peace, forgive us our sins. For yours is the power, glory, blessing, and majesty forever. Amen. O Lord, make us worthy to pray thankfully. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us, lead us not temptation. But deliver us not even one in Christ Jesus our Lord. For then is the kingdom and the power and the glory for Now, love of God, the Father, grace with only begotten Son, our Lord, God, and Savior, Jesus Christ, give me a gift of the Holy Spirit. Be with you all. Go in peace. May the peace of the Lord be with you all. Amen. And also with your spirit.